Welcome to the YouTube channel, Manhood, Race, and Culture, where we focus on issues that are facing African-American men, African-Americans as a race, and also the culture that we have to deal with. Now, I am Dr. James Thomas Jones III, an Associate Professor of African-American Studies, and I'm glad to be here with you at this moment. As always, please be sure to like our channel, subscribe to our channel even, definitely share the content that you see here that you deem worthy of being shared with others, and also click on the notification button. We deal with different topics in this space, um, kind of as they, they pop up, up in popular culture, current events and what have you. And so today we're gonna to be dealing with a group that is called No Left Turn in Education. And I'm sure that you're picking up right away that this idea of having no left turn in education is a play on leftist politics. And of course, it, it has to be dealing with, and this is white folks' um, infatuation at the present moment, critical race theory, something that they know very little about um, and care even less to learn anything about. However, their turn towards examining school curriculums and library holdings and what have you reminds me of Heinrich Hein's great quote. And it, it's one of the, the most reverberating and daunting and ominous quotes that one can ever come across. What Heinrich Hein says, when they burn books, they'll ultimately burn people also. Think about that. When they burn books, they will ultimately burn people also. And this is from the 18th century. He's born in the 18th century, he becomes a writer in the 19th century. He is um, giving us a warning, a prophetic warning about the darkness that is going to eventually enter into the hearts and minds of some of our fellow countrymen. Now, Back to what we're dealing with, um, we have to start our discussion by dealing with the American Library Association, which is the organization that has pushed back against groups like No Left Turn in Education. And what the American Library Association says in their denouncement of the No Left Turn in Education and other groups that are um, approaching this issue of, of removing text that they deem independently to be unworthy of being read. Their quote is this, and I quote them. In recent months, a few organizations have advanced the proposition that the voices of the marginalized have no place on library shelves, falsely claiming that these works are subversive, immoral, or worse. These groups induce elected and non-elected officials to abandon constitutional principles, ignore the rule of law, and disregard individual rights to promote government censorship of library collections. They're actually petitioning to go in and take out books that they don't think children should be exposed to. They are in every way infringing upon constitutional rights, just even in the thought of that. Now, let's deal with them um, straightforward. And the, the best way to deal with that is to actually look at what it is that they're saying. And this is their spiel about the books that they are um, seeking to have removed, censored, removed, banned, whatever you wanna use. Their quote is, these are the books that are used to spread radical and racist ideologies to students. They demean our nation and its heroes, revise our history, and divide us as a people for the purpose of indoctrinating kids to a dangerous ideology. Think about that. They are seeking to craft a American history that fits their narrative. And if anything goes against that, these people are advancing the, the idea that it can't be put into the schools. Now, to show you how ludicrous this entire thing is, I wanna take a moment and actually 
deal with their website. And I want to share my screen so you can see this. These are the books that they have decided need to be banned. And one of the more interesting things is quite simply, many of these books are children's books. A is for activists, anti-racist baby, Tay Diggs's book, Chocolate Me, um, Front Desk. And they go so far as to even deal with some of the uh, more legitimate university press publications. Um, Ibrahim X. Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist. They have a particular hatred for that brother. Um, critical Race Theory. But one of them that, that one of their selections that really just hurt my heart is it's one of the history books that I absolutely love. It is Howard Zinn's book, A People's History of the United States. As you can see, White Fragility is on here. And we have an extension of this list all the way down to anti-police books, what they term as anti-police books. And that, the hate you give that was actually turned into a motion picture is on here. Ghost Boys, not my idea. Mama, did you hear the news? And the list goes on and on. They deal with, of course, they're going to, um, the bigot train never stops. It makes a stop everywhere. It, you know, it doesn't miss anybody. So you have books that are addressing the LGBTQ plus community as well. And so you, you really have to um, be careful and aware of these people. And if you go through their website, this was one of the things that really made me laugh. They're dealing with the, um, they're addressing the 1619 project and history. To show you the way that they will, that these types of people will try to twist and turn um, history and to fit their own needs. Let's look at this quote that they use. Um, it's an amazing use of an individual who was the leading, for my money, the leading abolitionist in America. Many people will say William Lloyd Garrison, I believe it was Douglas. Douglas undoubtedly, when you're talking about black abolitionists. But they utilize a Douglas quote. And of course, they take it out of context to serve their own purposes once again. But the quote is, remember that we are one, that our cause is one, and that we must help each other if we would succeed. Frederick Douglass. OK, absolutely disingenuous. OK, Douglas does say that, but Douglas is not talking about the movement to curtail constitutional rights. And so, so for this group, they're educating their followers of what to look for. And if you see it, what we're going to do is we're going to create a legal case and we're, we're going to challenge what it is that you see. The irony of this, it was really ironic for me, is that they have a even a list of keywords that let you know that you're dealing with critical race theory. And once again, Frederick Douglass is the leading abolitionist that this nation has ever known. And one of their key words that should set you off and, allow, and, and guide you towards protesting is the word abolitionist. Also anti-bias, anti-blackness, anti-racism, anti-racist, blackness, criminal climate, uh, climate justice, colonizer, decolonizing. If you see any of these words, according to them, file a lawsuit. And they have an entire glossary of these words. File a lawsuit because they are teaching critical race theory and that is going to harm our children, of course, in their mind. The only children that exist are white children. So the question becomes, quite simply, what is it that we can do to fight back against this? As an educator, I'm always going to point to first becoming informed. You must understand that this is actually going on. It is too late after they've successfully removed the books. So you have to be proactive 
in regards to what are the machinations of your enemy. And rest assured, these people are your enemy. If they are able to achieve this, they'll move on to the next thing. Personally, within your home, I would advise you to read, 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 and read some more to your children. Go and get these books before they disappear. Check them out the library before they're taken off the shelves. Order them. Support, support authors who are doing great work and read these books for yourself and also to your children. And the next thing that we have to do, we have to abandon as a community this entire idea of there being some plot, some conspiracy aimed at destroying Black folk, that Black folk are helpless against fighting. Now, there are plots and there are plans, and Lord knows that, that we've seen these things. But this one here, and I just deal with them on, a, on an individual basis, this one here we can fight back against. And the way we fight back against it is by becoming informed, figuring out how is it that a person gets on the local school board and flooding the voting rolls and putting people who think like you, may even look like you, on in those positions so that we have a we have not only a single voice, but we have the majority of voices in that room. When that door is closed and they decide which way we're going to go as a community, we need our voices to be heard. It does no good for you to not be politically engaged because if you're not politically engaged, you're gonna be left outside of that room. And the greatest analogy I can use is quite simply, our people have historically been marching around in circles with placards saying, you know, um, these different sayings, these chants, or, you know, we, we can make something rhyme. But the decision makers are on the 79th floor of a building that is, that is soundproof. And they will come out and tell you, this is the way we're going. Now, of course, you're going to be up in arms and whatever, but what else could you do? You can't do anything at that moment. Proactive, not reactive. Get our people on those school boards. And when I say our people, I'm talking about people who may not look like you, but they think like you. They're not seeking to deny the presence of racism. They're not trying to tell you that the pursuit of racial justice is one that is not worthy of pursuing. And finally, this is just a, a fact. And it's, it's one of the few moments where um, Spike Lee was right on it with his adaptation of the autobiography of Malcolm X. And that moment is quite simply, when Malcolm is going, I, I wanna say he was going up to Boston College or Boston University and a white girl comes up and asks him, you know, she announces that she's a good white person and what is it that she could do to help his people. And Malcolm turns and tersely says, nothing. He would later say that that is one of the moments that he regrets in his public life. Because the truth of the matter is, is that there are pockets and segments of white America that are never going to be open to hearing anything that Black America says. They are beyond convinced. And that staunch stance of being beyond convinced is something that has been created through school curriculums, through socialization within homes. They're never going to hear us. They're never going to listen. They don't care to hear what it is that we have to say. That's where white leftists have to come in. They have to go into their communities and they have to educate their own people and convince their own people to look at the world through a different lens. It's a daunting task because in many ways we're asking those who are most privileged by the American system to go and fight against their privilege. 
And keep in mind, we live in a capitalist nation and the vast majority of white folk are middle class, working class, and some even poor. They're not the Jeff Bezos of the world. So that privilege is used and appreciated, to be honest with you. But it's their job to differentiate themselves from ardent racist and bigots, to go into those communities and to instruct and illuminate the minds of their fellow countrymen. Because that is quite simply something that we can not do as a black community, not with ardent segments who in many ways would prefer to see black folk vanquished from this country. And keep in mind, there's a rich tradition of efforts by whites to repatriate black folk out of here. We can talk about Sierra Leone, we, we can talk about Liberia, um, Haiti, they sent some black folk to Haiti. So we need to deal with um, groups like No Left Turn in ed Education with the utmost seriousness and staunchly oppose these draconian efforts to go ahead and remove books, books. I mean, really think about that. Books, they're trying to remove books from libraries, from, the, from school curriculums. Books that are presenting a different view of this nation, a different lens of this nation. We gotta fight against it at every turn. And once again, thank you for coming to Manhood, Race and Culture's YouTube channel. And if you would please like our channel, subscribe to our channel, share and push the notification button so that you can be um, made aware when we do produce our next video. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great day.